In 2008, happened a new thing in uh, Mahalla. And Mahalla is a very uh, famous industri industrial city for uh, textile. And workers there decided to make a strike in 2008. And they said, OK, let's do it in, in 6th of April. For um, this day, it was totally random. There was no, nothing behind it. But when the, uh, we have this, uh, this um, thing, which is like um, national intelligence, it's like a national security agency, they know everything, they have reports from everywhere, they uh, listen to phone calls, they even have someone inside every meeting, in every club, in every church, in every school. So they heard about what's, what was going in Mahalla because they had many people inside. So they kidnapped many workers and threatened the others if they didn't stop that. They will kidnap more, they will close the factory and they will also kidnap their families. So it was like a, a mafia, not a national security agency. And actually when they did it for the first time in, in Egypt, people didn't fear. People decided to, to do something bigger. People decided to, to make it bigger. So there was this call for everyone in Egypt to support those labor's cause. So it was like a, a call for everyone in Egypt to not to go to their work, not to go to their school, not to go to their university in 2008, in six of, uh, the day 6th of April. And they said to other people, if you have to, if, like if you are a doctor, if you are traveling or something, you can wear black. So we will show the government the power of us. And actually the 6th of April strike somehow succeeded because the government, with, with, with its stupidity, it announced it on the national television. Those who are going to absence from their work, even they were sick, even if they were abroad, even they were whatever, if they, did, they didn't register that day at work, they will get fired. And you can imagine how the government was treating our mentality. So the government, the, the people had like this um, fear of what might happen in the streets, so they just decided to sit at home. On that day, but in El Mahalla, it wasn't a sit at home. People went to streets, they took Mubarak's photos down from the streets and they put their feet on it. And of course, what happened in El Mahalla later wasn't that good. They cut off all ways that lead to El Mahalla, they cut all of communications that connect people in El Mahalla with the outside world. They surround it with a big cycle of um, with, uh, police officers. Yes, and they were like they are applying a very um, special case of emergency law. It was like uh, no one can go outside, tear gas everywhere, and it was spread there until it came down after a few weeks in the Mahalla. But people didn't forget what happened on the 6th of April 2008. So the 6th of April movement was created. So the movement wasn't from the labor who decided to strike. It was from Egyptian news who supported their cause and 6th of April strikes started to be like the, a pain in the government's back. They made demonst more demonstrations, they started to unite with enough movement and they started to, you know, uh, in the streets and they had to do other cultural uh, events, they had to make like concerts and street marches, so they had to improvise and people started to take the fear from themselves little bit by little bit, but definitely because uh, Mubarak's regime was very old, they, were, they had this very strong self-esteem that people are less than to be mentioned or to be cared about, so they didn't really care about what's going on the street, but people in the street were about to explode because uh, we, the, uh, the percentage of unemployment was getting higher, the, uh, the government policies inside and outside wasn't really good for uh, Egyptians. Like for example, the Egyptians abroad didn't feel they, that they are really belong to the country. And after 6th of April uh, strike, uh, Mubarak came out to, uh, to people and he really, in his last days or maybe last years, really he went uh, to make speeches. So he told people, don't worry, we will, uh, on 1st of May, because 1st of May is the uh, National Labor Day, so uh, after uh, 24 days,
he responded to the street action, which is quite long time, and show how disrespectful for people they are. And they said that they will give a 30% higher wages this year for employers, which should be some, something good for everyone. But on the other side, the government decided to raise taxes and to raise gas prices and everything else. So the, the increase wasn't really efficient. It, it was like, okay, you, you want it, you want it some more salaries, okay, get higher prices. It was like this. So you get a hidden message that don't ever, ever do it again. We imposed higher taxes on you. And it was really high that, like, for example, a pack of cigarettes before applying this increase will cost you like uh, six pounds. Okay, after that it started to cost like 12 pounds, so it was doubled, and gas prices also started to rise, and of course transportation uh, prices were uh, rise up, and transport transportation prices are very important for Egyptian families because most of Egyptian families own cars, so they take public transportation, transportation, and even public transportation that is owned by the state, its price was rise, and it was for people it was expensive than uh, the past because it was the thing that they didn't use to pay much money for, but now they have to make it in their consideration. After that, in 2008, and actually February 2010, the National Association for Change was created. Its slogan was, together we will change, and the founder was Muhammad al Baradai. Muhammad al Baradai is the uh, 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 former director general of the International Atomic Energy agency from 1997 to 2009 so you can see that uh, he's, he came to Egypt and uh, formed in 2010 so uh, since 2009 until 2010 when he came to Egypt he started to contact Egyptian politicians and oppositions to make a strong movement that gathered all the Egyptians against the regime and he's a Nobel Prize winner for his role in maintaining world peace and although he's 70 years old and the government offered him like when he came back will give you like this um, position it will be very uh, prestigious and you won't do much but you will get paid very well every month and you will take the rest of your days in peace and media will give you propaganda but he decided to go the other way so when he like uh, initiated war on the government, they started to to say uh, something else about him. Like for example, he won Nobel Prize because he works for the U.S. He's a U.S. ally. Also, Mubarak is a big ally for the U.S. But when this man becomes an ally for the U.S., it's very bad. So, Mohammed al-Baradi came to Egypt in 2010, and they said what's so-called the demands for change, and they collected around million signatures from. Uh, random people in the streets that and just people were uh, signing by their names and a national ID number saying that they agree on their demand on these demands and they want to change but the government of course didn't respond uh, to any of this and some officials in the government said that we cannot respond to this because this is like uh, kids games so uh, when they later announced that people in the, uh, in the National Association for Change managed to collect more than one million signatures for change people started to feel, okay, there is a lot of us there is many of us who want to change, who are not afraid anymore because their names were, uh, were announced and the government could easily know their names so um, there is this case about um, Egyptian police brutality that Police in Egypt are known for their uh, violence and they treating normal civ uh, civilians very bad and actually they weren't there to protect people they are almost to protect the emergency law and the state so whenever like for example you get your home stolen never ever try to think to go to the police station whether to forget about it or try to do it yourself, to look for who can who, uh, stole your home. So that was that. How was it going? The government protects itself from the people. The government treats people very bad. And whenever people go to demonstration, they know how they be treated from police. Even if it was silent march, even if it was very organized, even if, if it was peaceful, they just attack and start to hit 
people until one day in uh, two, uh, in 2000 until the parliamentary uh, elections the uh, the national democratic party or the national what so called democratic party in the elections they won 99.97 of the chairs in the parliament so all the parliament will belongs to the government only three chairs were for someone who is in a way or another made like a um, something, uh, you know, an agreement with the government to reach the parliament mm -hmm. and it was like people reached the maximum, people couldn't get it more because the whole parliament is from one party and the, par the parliament which was uh, before the 2005 parliament, they had like one third of the parliament from the opposition, so it doesn't make a sense that from 2005 to 2010 the government uh, popularity started to increase and they suddenly won all the parliament chairs. So uh, oppositions in the 2010 elections, they didn't uh, go with the parliament. They said uh, to the government, okay, we won't play this game with you. And in 2010, uh, in, 2010 in, in February, there's uh, this guy, 27, very decent looking guy. His name is uh, Muhammad Khalid Saeed. May his beautiful soul rest in peace. He was uh, he was a music composer. He was also computer engineer. He's 27 years old. He's living in one of the uh, middle class uh, districts in Alexandria. It's called Cleopatra district. And he was beaten by uh, police officers in the street until he died. Uh, two secret uh, police officers just keep hitting his head to the to a marble bar until his head actually literally exploded and the government said the government next day said that uh, he it was he died because of suffocation because he took a whole uh, pack of drugs in his lungs but people saw his picture and actually his family they were i'm sorry i won't show you for now because it's very hard to even for us to watch again and again we try to forget from time to time but we try to remember his beautiful face that's him in another photo so when people saw his photo on the internet after he got beaten, they realized how the asylum can make it more worse. Because for example, my father and your father and everyone's father saw the photo and said, oh my god, how if someday my children or my child was in his place? And what if it could be anyone of us? Because they now they don't differentiate with one or another. And uh, the reason, people say the reason behind why uh, the police officer beating him because they said that they wanted to, to arrest him because he had a video about drug dealer which was apparently a police officer. So this police officer sent his um, two of, of uh, the uh, two police officers, uh, we, call it, we call them secret agents who work in the uh, police station but they wear civilian clothes and they started to they grab him out of the internet cafe he was sitting in and started to kill him in the street in front of everyone and that day instead of his family like escape or remain silent or anything for some reason or for somehow they got the courage to go and see his face after he died and take photo of it and show it to the world because they wanted to build a cause. They didn't just want to, uh, you know, to grab his body and forget it or get written from the government. Of course, they got written many times after to remain silent and not to appear in media, but they didn't.